Hello everyone and welcome back to the Antler Studios development vlog. This week we'll mainly be talking about one of the potion mechanics and how we sort of came up with it and how we implemented it. That'll be with Harry, but first a few updates. In terms of animals, we've been continuing the work from last week. So you can see now the textured fish, which is looking great from Jinx. And now she's also moving on to the puffer squirrel, which is a sort of magical squirrel that flies around on the geysers. But there's a we're really exciting asset to see in the game soon. There's some other work going on behind the scenes that I can't show you, unfortunately. Now I'll be handing over to Harry. We'll be talking through the lunification potion and how we implemented the gravity switching mechanic. Hi guys, it's Harry here, lead programmer at the studios. And today I'm going to be giving you guys a quick overview of a prototype of one of the potions we've got in the game. This is the lunification potion and the part I'm going to be specifically showing is one half of it. The, the lunification potion does a couple of things um, and one of them that it does is basically form a little gravity well that allows you to stand underneath Elpin as opposed to on top of him. Now the, the gravity well doesn't have any visual effects at the minute um, so I'm just all you can see here is basically a capsule collider but I wanted to talk you through the programmatic side of things and just give you an update on like how we've done that and what the process is. So ignore all the like red lines and debuggy stuff for now. But yeah, basically when I'm, I've got the lunification potion equipped, you can see it on the top there, and then when I use it, I've got some placeholder visual effects. And you can see uh, the outlines of a little capsule collider here. If I walk into this, hey. uh, I am now stuck upside down. Um, so the plan for this potion is to basically build a few different puzzles where you'll need to use Elpin to like maybe jump over something because you've turned board upside down. Uh, we also want this effect, this, this um, gravity inverting effect to affect physical objects in the game as well. So things like boulders and whatnot. Um, hey. And it was a bit weird to do. Oh. Okay, oh. I'm dead. It was a little bit weird to do. Uh, and what I thought was going to be quite a simple effect actually turned out to be bit of a headache because uh, some of the things in Unreal's uh, character class were a little bit confusing so I thought it might be worth sharing some of what I've learned with you guys. Yeah, so this is the blueprint for the gravity well which is what I've, I've called it. Essentially all that happens on Elpin the robot when he opens his platform if he's in the lunification mode he'll spawn this so all the code to do with the gravity well is kept as a separate class, separate blueprint, blueprint blah, 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 a separate blueprint class. All it really is is a capsule collider attached to a an empty scene component just so that I can offset it. And basically I'm applying the uh, functionality whenever Edric enters this capsule. There is one little caveat though because the Elpin spawns kind of where this circle is. I don't necessarily want the inverted gravity to apply in this upper section. Um, upon overlap with the capsule I'm just doing another check and that's basically checking that Edric is not higher than the actor the actor's center is actually this little dot so if he's above this dot the gravity won't change and if he's below it and he enters this capsule then the gravity will change at some point i want to change this to a different shape but i'm just using a capsule collider now just so i can get the basic functionality down but after a few um simple checks to do with whether or not i've recently come in or out of the capsule i can explain these later the main effect that gets applied is this invert gravity effect here uh, it's collapsed to a function at the minute, but I'll just explain what I'm doing in order to flip the gravity around. So the is inverted boolean is a, a boolean I've made on my player class on Edric. Um, this is used to basically invert the jump when you jump. So when you press the jump button, it will apply a negative force if um, if inverted is true. But that's not uh, important right now. The actual gravity stuff is basically handled via Edric's character movement component. So the character movement component is a component that's attached to everything that derives from the character class, um, not everything from the pawn class. So if you are going to try and apply this, you need to make sure that you are working with a character and not just a pawn. Character movement has a variable on it called gla gravity scale. Essentially, I'm just changing this to an inverted version of what it was before. My flipped gravity scale uh, is find on begin play so on begin play I find my character's current gravity scale and I save the inverse of that or a modified version of that uh, as my flipped gravity scale I basically found out that I didn't want my flipped gravity scale to be a one for one inversion because it didn't work quite so well so the flipped gravity scale 
is basically two thirds of the initial gravity scale, but in the opposite way. Anyway, so after you've inverted the gravity scale, that will make your pawn fly up, um, but it won't do anything to change your camera uh, and any of that kind of stuff. So that was the stuff that I found to be a little difficult. I can get rid of this. So after you flip the gravity scale, you want to turn off use pawn control rotation. This is a boolean that's part of the first person camera component. There'll be an equivalent one if you're using the third person camera, they're both the same. Once you've turned that off, you want to invert camera. So originally I had all this stuff happen instantly, but because I wanted the head flipping to happen over a period of time, I decided to use a timeline. So when I invert the gravity, I'm basically calling an event. This event's just called invert camera. And all that's happening here is I'm basically taking the camera's existing rotation. So cameras don't have a roll rotation naturally. And I'm I'm changing the camera's rotation. It's keeping its pitch and it's yaw the same, but it's moving its roll from zero to minus 180. And I think it's just over the course of well, it's over half a second. So over half a second, I've got a float track here that goes from zero to one. And that, because if that happens over half a second and we're going to pump that value out here and then we're going to lerp between 0 and minus 180 degrees and then set that as the roll of my camera so what this means is when I enter the gravity well and the gravity gets reverted it's also going to let my camera over over the course of half a second and there's some other stuff here which is basically to do with um, correcting the camera when you leave because another thing that you might have noticed is that I have another event here called revert camera which fires off when you leave the gravity well and that basically reverses the timeline and sets your camera back up to the right way. What I was finding though is sometimes uh, it didn't work <laughs> completely right uh, or it was giving the camera a weird offset. So uh, I was storing the camera's relative location when I enter the gravity well and making sure that it remains that when I leave it. Uh, that's all you really need to know about flipping the camera around. So after uh, I've inverted the gravity scale so that Edric flies up and I've set the first person camera component to not use the controller rotation. Uh, I want to make sure that my actual, so basically it's going to take all of its rotational values now from its parent class which is Edric my character. So with Edric my character uh, I'm changing a variable on him and that variable is use controller's rotation pitch. The pitch is basically how much you're looking up or down and normally that goes directly from the controller to the camera and sort of bypasses the actor which is a bit weird which does make sense because you don't really want your character's capsule kind of flopping around too much but I've found that um, when you're still on top of Elpin it's not really noticeable and because the camera is no longer using the controller's rotation we need to still be able to look up and down when we're stood underneath Elpin. What I was finding um, without this was that uh, you wouldn't be able to look up or down, you would only be able to spin round and round, and that wasn't what we wanted. And then the last thing is to take the Edric controller. This is just a, a pure function that literally just gets my character controller class and casts it. I got sick of doing it every five minutes, so <laughs> I collapsed it to a little function. This just takes your character controller and flips the pitch and your scale the other way around because found when you're upside down uh, if you move the mouse to the right you'll start turning to the left so you need to invert these two things to or in order to ensure that your camera will still spin the way you kind of expect it to and then once you've got all that stuff together your camera should essentially uh, work as you expect it to uh, although upside down the next problem that I encountered with this process was to do with Hedrick's hand animations the game essentially considered Edric to be falling whenever he was inside this gravity well. His hands would be constantly flailing around, um, up and down. Up off a cliff here and show you what I mean. So if you take note of Edric's hands, his hands would be flailing like that pretty much the whole time that he was stood on top of Elpin in this inverted form. Basically because the way the character movement component determines how, uh, what movement mode you should be in and whether or not you're falling is, is to do with velocity and whether or not there's some stuff underneath you. So the workaround I'm using is basically by setting his movement mode to flying and then adding a couple of additional constraints to ensure that he can't fly in the full 360 degrees of motion that you would normally expect when movement mode is set to flying. And the way I'm doing that is by first picking up the collision event between Elpin's platform box and Edric. The platform box is this little 
orange uh, it's a cuboid that's quite thin and over in the event graph I'm saying on component hit if it's Edric this stuff is just to do with sound uh, if you've hit Edric and Edric is inverted which we know he will only be when he's inside the gravity well set his movement mode to flying that's all that's happening here and then over in my Edric C++ class I've overridden the function to do with adding movement input this function is normally found within the character class but it's virtual so if you want to override it with your own custom movement types you can uh, and we have because we have a few different types of moving in the game like for instance swimming an obvious one uh, but we also used to have vines and stuff anyway I can pick up the specific game state when Elpin is inverted here so it checks all these other things which you know, he's not going to be climbing he's not going to be swimming and then the next question is okay well are you flying and are you inverted which we know uh, both of them will be true in this instance so if you're flying and moving all I'm essentially doing is taking world direction which is going to be the unit vector he would normally move and flattening it so by flatten I mean removing the Z component so here I declare a temporary vector variable and it's essentially the same as world direction world direction by the way uh, is an input it's an argument here that comes into this function so it's already predetermined I'm declaring a new vector which is flattened versioned of it and then I'm normalizing it uh, to ensure that it's still the correct length and then re reassigning world direction as this new flattened version of it and this will essentially ensure that my character can only move laterally even if he is in this flying movement mode by laterally I mean along the x and y axes yeah, so this is the, the final result, so there's no visual effects at the minute, though I have left the outline of the capsule there just so I can see what I'm doing. When I walk into the gravity well, the camera roll flips upside down like we discussed. I am still stuck to the ground at the minute, that's going to be the next thing I'm doing. I probably just need him to have him jump as soon as this happens, but hey. if I do jump, you'll notice that the gravity is upside down, and that I'm moving my mouse right when I'm going right and left when I'm going left, you'll have to believe me. Uh, but previously these were inverted. And previously, the hands would be doing the uh, falling animation. And there's still a few little bugs to do, there's still a few things to tweak, and it also needs a kind of visual representation. But given that this was a little bit more complicated than I thought, I would have thought inverting gravity would have been pretty straightforward. Um, I thought I'd let you guys know how we did it. Cheers, thanks. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to get into contact with us, there's a Discord link in the description below where you can join. And should you want to check out Project Grove, there's a live Steam demo right now. The link will also be in the description below. We'll see you in the next one. Have a lovely rest of your day.